So we are going to be talking about three different theorems today, which if you have an understanding of them, will let you solve for all of the roots of any polynomial. The first one is called the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra, and it says the following. There are the same number of complex roots. Now, remember or recall that complex roots include real and imaginary and within the real there are rational and irrational. So we will be talking about typically the language that we'll use is are there rational, irrational, or imaginary roots? Okay, Knowing that rational and irrational are real. Okay, So there are the same number of <laughs> complex roots as the degree of the polynomial. So if it's a third degree, there will be three roots. If there is an eighth degree, there will be eight roots. Now, the thing to remember here, or the thing that we have to get straight in our heads is we have learned that the max number of x-intercepts is equal to the degree. But these, when we say maximum, you know how we say sometimes there's less x-intercepts? Well, there might be less x-intercepts, but there are still the maximum number of, of, of roots, and they could be imaginary or something else. So I'm going to try and show you how that might work. All right, so given y equals x to the 6th plus some other terms that we don't really know. Just from this information, we know the right hand is up and the left hand is up because we're positive and even. The possible number of turning points It could be 5, could be 3, or it could be 1. And then the possible number of x-intercepts could be 6, Five, four, three, two, one, or zero. Okay. Now, for our purposes today, up, up, let's choose five turning points and four x intercepts. And you wonder how that might be possible. Well, our graph could look like this. We could have 1, 2, 3, 4 x-intercepts. And we could have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 
turning points. Now, here's the key thing, in my opinion. The real roots, which are rational and irrational, will always cross the x-axis the imaginary roots don't the imaginary roots do not cross the x-axis so for example this x-intercept and root could be negative 5 that would be rational. This next root could be negative square root of 3. That would be irrational. The next root could be one-third. That would be rational. The fourth one could be positive square root of three. That would be irrational. And then the last roots, which are not x-intercepts, would be imaginary. They could be something like 5 plus 2i and 5 minus 2i. These would be imaginary. Okay, so far? All right. I'm going to start a new page. The next theorem is called the rational root theorem. I'll just tell you what's coming. You know if there's a rational root theorem? There's got to be an irrational root theorem. And if we have rational roots and irrational roots, then there's probably going to be an imaginary root theorem. Okay? All right. So the rational root theorem says this. Yep, I've already made a mistake here. The possible values of the rational roots equal, and then we're going to have a fraction. and it's going to be plus or minus and in the numerator we are going to have factors of the constant and in the denominator we are going to have factors of the lead coefficient. So let me give you an example how this might work. 
let's say that we have y equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 10. Now, how many po what are, what's the max possible x-intercepts it could have? Three. What's the number of real or imaginary roots it will have? Three. But it could also have one, or one real root. Um, so let's figure out what are the possible values of the rational roots. Well, what we would do is we would say plus or minus, and then what are the factors of the constant 10? What numbers divide into 10? 1, 2, 5, and 10. And then the lead coefficient is 1, so the factors of 1 are 1. Okay, so now we simplify this fraction. So we could have plus or minus 1 over 1, which is 1. We could have plus or minus 2 over 1, which is 2. We could have plus or minus 5 over 1, which is 5 and plus or minus 10 over 1, which is 10, plus or minus 10. So what this means is, when you graph this polynomial, when it crosses the x-axis, if there is a rational root, it will be one of these numbers. Okay? Now I'll just tell you when you graph it, it looks like this. That's what the graph looks like. We'll save some time and I'll just show it to you. And it turns out that of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, of the eight possibilities, the only one is plus 2. Okay. <coughs> All right, let's st put this away for now and let's do irrational root theorem. Given all coefficients of the polynomial are rational. And pretty much, well, I, everything that we're doing will have rational coefficients. We're not going to do any imaginary coefficients on our polynomials. Nor are we going to do any irrational coefficients. Okay? So what the irrational root theorem is, assuming this is the case, then <coughs> if A plus the square root of b is an irrational root, then a minus the square root of b is also an irrational root and vice versa.
or you could think of it in this, like this. Irrational roots always come in pairs. So if you had negative square root of 3, then you'd also have to have positive square root of 3. That's just how they come. I'm going to squeeze the imaginary root theorem in here because it's, it works almost exactly like the irrational root theorem. Given polynomial with real coefficients then imaginary roots always come in pairs so you could have something like plus 3i and minus 3i. They always come in pairs, plus or minus. All right, that's all the notes. What I'd like to do is, you, is do an example and demonstrate what these theorems mean in terms of doing a problem. Can I flip this page yet, or is anybody still using it? <coughs> Set? Okay. All right. Let's say that we have y equals 9x to the fourth plus 3x cubed minus 30x squared plus 6x plus 12. Okay, first thing we're going to do is determine what are the possible rational roots. All right, so first thing we need is in the numerator, we need factors of the constant. And the constant is 12, so what are the factors? Let's start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, no, 6, yes, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. And then the denominator is factors of 9. 1, 3, and 9. Okay. So here's what we got to do, and this is where it turns into a nightmare even more than it already is. 
is that we have to determine what all the factors are. So I'm just going to cover up the 3 and the 9 and say if we take all these numbers in the, in the numerator divided by 1, what do we get? We'd get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 12. So now, let's cover up the 1 and the 9. So what are some more possibilities? Plus or minus 1 over 3, plus or minus 2 over 3, plus or minus 3 over 3 which is 1, which we already have listed, plus or minus 4 over 3, plus or minus 6 over 3, which is 2, which is already listed, and plus or minus 12 over 3, which is 4, which is already listed. Okay. All right, and now the rest of the possibilities are plus or minus 1 over 9, plus or minus 2 over 9, plus or minus 3 over 9 is the same as 1 third, which we already have, plus or minus 4 over 9 plus or minus 6 over 9 which is 2 thirds which we already have and plus or minus 12 over 9 would we? 4 over 3 yes excellent reduction of your fractions well done. Okay. So, this is, these are all the possibilities of the rational roots. Now, let me just tell you, be glad that you are growing up in an era of calculators. Because in the old days, what you would have to do is you would have to take every single one of these and plug them into the polynomial calculate by hand whether you got y equals zero for a rational root. Yeah, there was a lot of crying going on. Right? I still have the, the tracks of my tears are still on my cheek. Okay. So the good thing is that what we can do now is we can go into our calculator and we can just, you know what, let's save some time and I'll just, I'm just going to do it myself here, okay? Because this takes so long. Um, I don't even have the right one in here. Oh. All right, so we can graph. Minus 30x squared plus 6 x plus 12. Okay, we can just graph this and see how many roots there are. Hmm. It looks like there's three or four. Can you tell? Four maybe. I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a new trick here. Zoom. See number one? Zoom box. Oh, shoot. I did it wrong. Zoom box. What you can do is you can reset your window by pressing one corner of a box and then scrolling to the opposite corner of a box and your calculator will zoom into this area. 
Now, it is four. So the key now is, are these roots rational or irrational? Know what I'm saying? So what we could do is, well, what's that one look like right there? Does that look like negative two? I'm going to press trace and I'm going to do negative two enter and it gives me a point on that line. So when I plug in negative two, I get y equals zero. Is that a rational root? Yeah, because it's in our list right here. It's this one, negative two. So the, the real or the rational roots One of them is negative two. How about that one right there? I mean, could it be negative one third? Nope, because we don't get y equals zero. Could it be negative two thirds? Nope. Um, could it be negative one ninth? Nope, we don't get zero. Negative two ninths, we don't get zero. Negative four ninths, no. It's it's none of these. So this is an irrational root. The other way that we could do this is we could do second trace to go to the calculate menu, and we could find the zero. And we could go to the left side and the right side and we could guess and we get a value of negative point five four eight five eight four and then you could compare that decimal to any of these and you'd find out it doesn't match okay so that one's irrational how about the next one right there what does that one look like looks like one and it is we get zero and we could test this other one right there but I will tell you that that also is irrational because remember, the irrational root theorem said irrational roots always come in pairs. Okay? So, in our sketch here, we have boom, 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 boom. We have rational negative 2. We have rational positive 1. And so now we have to find the actual values of the irrational roots. I'm pretty sure if you don't already hate math that you're going to after we're done here. Because this is brutal. Okay. Well, here's what we know. 9x to the 4th plus 3x 3rd minus 30x squared plus 6x plus 12 equals these two roots here, right? x minus a negative 2, x plus 2, and x minus 1. And then, can't we do some synthetic division to find that last polynomial? Yep, we can. Let's do it. 9, 3, negative 30, 6, 12. The first root, we're going to divide by negative 2. Drop the 9. Times negative 2 is negative 18. Plus 3 is negative 15. Times negative 2 is positive 30 which gives us zero, multiply is zero, we get six times negative two is negative twelve, remainder zero. And then we divide the next root, so negative one we would divide by positive one, drop the nine and multiply negative 15 plus 9 
negative 6 times 1 is negative 6 plus 0 is negative 6 times 1 is negative 6 and the remainder is 0. So we started out with 9x to the fourth divided by an x is x to the third divided by an x is x squared minus 6x minus 6. And so that goes right in there. So <coughs> 9x squared minus 6x minus 6. Okay. So now we have factored this big fourth degree polynomial as far as we can, and now we can solve for the roots. We set each of the factors to zero. And we solve them. So minus 2, we get x equals negative 2. We already knew that. And we get x equals 1. We already knew that one. And I'm going to go to a new sheet of paper because this cannot be factored, right? And we know it couldn't be factored because we couldn't do it with the, with the division. So, so I'm going to rewrite it here. 9x squared minus 6x minus 6 equals 0. So we're going to have to do quadratic formula on this. But let me ask you this. Before we do quadratic formula, can we factor anything out of this? Let's factor a 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3x squared. Factor a 3 out, we get 2. We get that. Now, this is going to seem weird, but we can do it. We can divide both sides by 3, and the 3 goes away. Let's see, quadratic formula, ax squared plus bx plus c. We need to identify the a value, the b value, and the c value. The A value is 3. The B value is negative 2. And the C value is negative 2. X equals minus B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2a and we plug in the a, b, and the c x equals minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4a, c all over 2a there we go minus minus is positive 2 2 times 3 is 6 Let's see. Negative 2 squared is 4. Minus <coughs> times minus is plus. 4 times 3 is 12 times, or no, yeah, 12 times 2 is 24. So four, that should be 28. So I'm going to write it like this, 2 over 6 plus or minus the square root of 28 over 6. Do you remember how to simplify square roots? 
let's see, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. Do any of these numbers divide into 28? Does 25 go into 28? 16? 9? No. 4? 4 goes in how many times? Okay. So 2 over 6 is the same as 1 third plus or minus. Actually, let's do this. Um, square root, of, we're doing a little aside. Square root of 28 is the same as the square root of 7 times 4, right? And this, here, I'm going to change this around. 4 times 7, so that's the same as square root of 4 times square root of 7. Square root of 4 is 2, square root of 7. So this is plus or minus 2 square root of 7 over 6. Which is 1 third plus or minus the square root of 7 over 3. Those are the actual values of the two irrational roots. Isn't that a nightmare? Okay. Now, I'm going to go back to my calculator, and I'm going to do the following. I'm going to press trace, and I'm going to enter in the first 1 divided by 3 plus square root of 7 divided by 3. And what do I get for a y value? So we know we did the work right. That's an intercept. Let's do the other one. 1 third minus the square root of 7 divided by 3. And we get y0. So they both worked. Okay. Now there's no homework tonight. We are going to spend all day in class just practicing problems like this. Okay?